This webinar is really very special because uh, we have a guest, a special guest. So, but uh, about Mike a bit later. For now, about uh, this tutorial, about how to start a blog in seven easy steps. But uh, we uh, would Mike prepared even more. It's not seven, it's like ten or even more steps, easy steps for you to to start your blog. Uh, yes, Steve, uh, you, you will receive a copy of the presentation as well as a, a webinar recording. So no writing, just some notes for you. Presentation and webinar recording will be uh, just your email maybe tomorrow, I think. So you must have heard a lot about the importance of running a blog, right? However, you have probably come up with a thousand or more reasons why you cannot start a blog. So there are several. Uh, you are not a writer. That's why you, you are not into blog. You have no extra budget for outsourcing a writer or copywriter. And you don't believe the blog can convert. Mike Alton. So our guest for this tutorial webinar. Uh, Mike is a social media blog guru and Mike has grown his social media hat. Guys, be sure to check this blog out. The social media hat from scratch and he agreed to share his experience and practice tips with us. So thank you very much, Mike. Can you hear us well? Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. I this is what I like to talk about all the time. So this and Star Wars, we could, you know, change the webinar if everyone wants to talk about the new Star Wars movie. But uh, yeah, otherwise uh, we'll talk blogging for a while. <laughs> yeah, of course. So May May the Force uh, has already passed. So today we're talking about the blogging. Yeah. So May the Force be with you. Okay. So uh, several words about me. Uh, I'm sure you know me. So I am Ala, uh, content marketer for Promo Republic. Uh, so I love social media. I'm a content contributor and blogger. Uh, before we start, uh, I want to just um, share some great and incredible and awesome news with you. Uh, you will see the slide maybe two times more. Uh, so for now, just um, be sure that you um, saved this link. Uh, since yesterday or the day before yesterday, I'm not sure, uh, Promer Public offers you personal training with social media experts yeah uh, be sure to follow this link it's not uh, from our public course yeah and uh apply apply for a training for uh, for training with social media experts what is it about what do you get <laughs> you're the voice carlos uh mike please guys stay with us uh, so what you get with this special social media uh, training, 30 minutes of private Skype conversation, uh, what uh, you will get? You will get analysis of your social accounts and profiles. So our experts, they will check out your website, they will check out your accounts and profiles and you will get a full and really very nice analysis. Then uh, one week of full support and guidance and four courses on social media marketing. Yes, uh, for now there are four courses and uh, two more just are in progress. Uh, get from republic.com course, personal training with social experts. Just don't miss your chance, okay? That's for you uh, to, to check it out. Uh, now a bit of housekeeping. So. If you have some questions, feel free to ask them here in the chat box and uh, we will answer them all. Yes, uh, as I already said, this webinar is being recorded and you will get uh, the link um, to the webinar recording as well as the presentation. OK. So now uh, probably table of contents, right? What we are going to talk about um, next hour, I think, later. Or even more if you are interested in from our public uh, make sure you stay till the end and you will get this opportunity so first we'll discuss why does your business need a blog yes yeah, some pros and cons stats and data uh, how to find topics your audience will like yeah uh, how to create catchy titles 
how to promote your blog on social media, how to create stunning cover images, and of course, tips and best practices by Mike Alton. Yeah, and special offers at the end of the webinar, as well as demo, from our public demo. We have a question. Uh, Scott, yeah, of course, uh, you will get all the copies. Uh, let's start. Why does your business need a blog? Just uh, some numbers. Uh, companies who blog receive 97 more links to their website. That's 97%. Yeah, that's just a great number. B2B, which stands for business to business marketers that use blogs, get 67 more, 67 percent more leads than those that do not. And 47 percent of buyers viewed from three to five pieces of content before purchase. Yeah. Next. Uh, so, according to the research done by uh, Content Marketing Institute, blogs take the third place right after social media marketing and case studies in B2B content strategies. Here they are, blogs 81%. Next, some reasons for you. Why does your business need a blog? First of all, you establish your authority as an industry leader. Then you humanize your brand, get more traffic, generate more deeper level. You build links back to your website, and of course, you improve your website SEO. Mike, we need your experience. Just try to do that, please. Uh, how the blog can improve the overall marketing picture? Yeah, as you mentioned, you know, traffic and leads are certainly uh, the benefits. They're critical benefits, in fact, uh, to most of us. And as you can see from this study, which happened to be by HubSpot, a marketing company, a couple of years ago, they did this study. You can see that, ten, that companies that created 10 blog posts or less uh, tended to get, uh, in this case, it's a traffic index of 100. But that's kind of uh, referring to the amount of leads, traffic, and sales that they might get over time. And then, you know, as they added, they went to 11 to 20 blog posts, they got more traffic and leads. When they went to 21 to 50, they got even more. But what was really interesting about this study is when companies created more than 50 pieces of content in their archive, they began to see an exponential increase in traffic, leads, and sales. And that's because every single time you create a new blog post, if it's targeted, each new piece of content helps to build on the authority and the success of not just the content that preceded it, but the site overall. And that results in search engines seeing your site and your business as a true authority, uh, worthy of something, you know, receiving more traffic and interest uh, from people that have actual search intent. So that's how blogging benefits the bottom line. And that's why it was number three on that earlier chart from Content Marketing Institute. That chart was specifically yeah. asking marketers, what tactics did you use in the past year and what are you going to use in the, in the, in the, you know, the, the coming year? And that's why blogging is number three. They see the benefits of it. Now, I should point out that while I say blog and blog posts, what I'm really referring to is creating content. Right? Blog posts are probably the most common type of content that businesses create, but it's not the only kind. Uh, they can create, as you see in this list, pages, FAQs, testimonials, case studies, white papers, reports and studies. Those are all really, frankly, different kinds of written content. And then you move into videos, podcasts, infographs, presentations, articles and stories, which come back to written content but in a different angle. So all of this together represents content, different kinds of content which can reach different kinds of people, different audiences. They can leverage different strengths of the organization. You know, so if you're better on camera and you don't enjoy writing, well, then create videos. If mm -hmm. you can, have a mix uh, because all those different kinds of content together can help you reach the widest possible audience. Not everybody likes to learn in the same way at the same time. And by having all of this content, you end up fueling your social media activity. 
See, every time you create a new piece of content, whether it's a blog post or one of these other pieces of content, that's something you can now share. And you can talk about that on social media. You get your audience engaged and interested in having conversations around the topic that you're talking about. But first, you need to think about what you're actually going to write about, right? Yeah, of course. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, what are you writing about? And now we're talking about how do you find topics your audience will like? Yep. Once you decide to run a blog, you need to start to generate ideas. There are no valuable ready-made blog posts, believe us. It takes a lot of effort to create a worthy content. To write a piece that will catch their attention, you must be sure that this topic brings value, this topic is informative, and this one solves problems, right? So there are three easy steps to help you start with the topic. Step number one, think of their interest. Step number two, follow top blogs related to your industry and monitor your competitors. So now uh, we'll just be very precise about every, uh, about each of these steps, right? Uh, think of your audience's interest. Conduct a Q&A. So the, the easiest, probably the easiest way for you is just to ask. You can see a slide uh, that tells you ask them in newsletter. Yes, just uh, you can lead uh, this. Uh, you, you, you can lead them uh, to your website. Uh, post, for example, or just uh, create a Google form or mention all the questions, all the topics uh, here in the server. And on the right, uh, you can see and the Facebook post and reactions. Uh, if your audience is not talkative, I do recommend you to use emotions uh, for, for them to answer you. Yeah, so for example, if you like uh, topic number one, just Thumb up, yeah? If you like topic number two, leave your heart here. So it's, everything is really very easy. Uh, some tools for you to find out uh, more about their interests. Hashtagify. Use Hashtagify to pick up topics. There are also tools that let you find audience interest related to your business. Uh, this tool is free and really useful for your Instagram marketing. Yeah, it's for hashtags. Here you can find the screenshot on this tool. But for now, let's use it in the purpose to discover the broad range of interests that comprise your audience. Just take a look. Uh, let's pretend I am an online bookstore and uh, I know that my customer personas are keen on books. From the hashtags I see here, here, I, so I left my books, right? And Hashtagified offered me uh, this related hashtags. So from these hashtags, I come up with several blog post titles or ideas. So one, two, three, four, five. Yep. And here you will find seven romance novels that should be on your list. Different reading techniques and how to use them. Yes, just everything is really very easy. Uh, it took me several minutes, really several minutes to generate five topics for this industry out of these related hashtags. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Search the internet and read two or five related articles. After formulating your point of view on a definite topic, you will be ready to present a fresh point of view for your readers. So, Fiddly, two Number two, here we are. Uh, use Feedly for free and find best in class blogs with the content that may be of interest to your audience. Here, you can see that I left my keyword books, and these are the blogs uh, which are relevant for me as an influencer of my niche. Uh, in my niche and uh, these blogs are uh, interested uh, for my audience. 
Google Alerts. Create an alert and enter a topic you want to follow. Every day, at a set time, Google will send you articles that match your topic. Here we'll find box, create alert. Every day at a set time, it's something like uh, 10 a.m. Yeah, 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. that Google alerts just uh, send you a huge list of, uh, of blogs, articles, um, documents uh, with your keyword. Next, monitor competitors. Step number two. The easiest one is just ask Facebook. Put your keyword in Facebook search bar and choose post. Facebook will offer you suggested posts with this word. You can manage search by who it was posted by, here in the uh, sidebar, who it was posted by, where, and when. Basumo. This really advanced search. Search for terms of phrases and quickly identify content that's performing well in your niche. Funnel your search by date and social network for more detailed information. Yes, so uh, by date, language, country, and content type. Yes, and just uh, tap these columns and you will funnel your search according to the biggest number of shares on Facebook, Twitter, uh, then what we have LinkedIn, Pinterest, Google Plus, and number of links. Mike, how do you define topics for your blog post? So do you have some kind of formula or something? How do you find out these topics? And you write pretty often. Yeah, I do. Um, that's an actual screenshot of, of, of the two I'm going to talk about in that image. Uh, my approach, it's, it's more of a mindset than a formula. I call it the blogger's mindset, and, and it works kind of like this. The tool that I use is called Evernote. Now, some of you may have used Evernote. Some of you may already be using other note-taking utilities. Uh, Google Keep is a good example. Uh, Microsoft OneNote is another comparable tool. The point of these specific tools, rather than just note paper or Word or something like that, is that they live in the cloud. And so when I create notes and information in these tools, they're accessible on all of my devices. So within Evernote, I have a blogging notebook. And within that notebook, I can begin to create individual notes for each idea that I have as it comes to me. Now, if you're just starting out, it's certainly a good idea to spend some time brainstorming ideas, thinking about what it is that your audience might be interested in, what, the, what it is that you know about, and where you can fill in some of the gaps uh, between those two directions. But what I love best about Evernote and about this blogger's mindset is that since I can get to it on my iPhone, no matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm doing, if I have an idea for a blog post, I can record it instantly. And the more often I do this, the more of a habit it becomes. Whether I'm having a conversation with somebody, I'm listening to a song on the radio, um, I see a commercial on TV, I see something happen in life, I begin to train my mind to think in the back end, how can I write about that? How does that apply to my audience? How does that apply to my business? And as more and more of those ideas bubble up, I capture them all. Every single idea, they always go into Evernote. Sometimes it's just the idea, maybe a title or something like that. Sometimes it's quite a bit more. It'll depend a little bit on, uh, obviously, where I'm at. I mean, if I'm in the car and I've stopped at a stoplight, I, I don't have time to write more than the idea. Uh, that's actually where there's a nice feature within Evernote called Voice Record. Um, so I've actually recorded some extensive ideas into Evernote while driving. But sometimes you just don't have much time. So as long as you capture the idea, that's enough. If you have the time and you have some other thoughts, get all those in there as well. That way, when you're ready to actually sit down and write, and I do recommend that you have time set aside every day, every week for pure writing, you're not staring at a blank screen. 
You know, I don't want you ever to sit in front of an empty Word doc and say, well, Mike told me to spend an hour a day writing, so here I am, I'm ready to write, I'm ready for that idea, it's going to come to me any minute now. That, that's not going to work. It's just going to make you frustrated because you're, you're under pressure to come up with an idea right at that moment. Instead, if you follow this technique and you develop this blogger's mindset technique, what you'll have then is a never-ending supply of topics that you can write about. And when it, becomes, when, when it becomes time for you to do some writing, you just get to choose which one speaks to you at that moment. For me, most of my writing is actually Saturday afternoons. Uh, that's, that's time when I've got downtime from, from family and uh, you know, I don't have clients or work. Uh, interrupting me, I usually have at least three to four solid hours of quiet, uninterrupted time in my office when I can write. And I can come up here and look at my list and say, you know what? I feel like writing about Facebook today. What have I, what have I thought about in the past that relates to Facebook? And, and I'll find a post. Maybe I'll find a post that I've already written half of it. And it's just time for me to finish it, whatever the case might be. I don't have the issue of staring at a white blank page. Now this does require a solid sense for what your audience is interested in, and that's something you'll develop over time. You can use the tools that I'll just went through. Uh, Basumo and Son will help you understand what your audience is interested in before you even start to write. And then once you've gotten some content in your archive, Look at your Google Analytics. Pay attention to your social activity. Out of all the posts that you've written so far, which ones are performing the best? Those are the ones that you should think about uh, developing and expanding in additional blog posts. So once you've got to that topic, and once you've been writing it, working it, and to focus on the most important part, the title. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Indeed. But what about three three hours on Saturday evening? H how do you do that? <laughs> how is it possible to find three three hours on Saturday evening? Well, like I said, it uh, for me this is this is what works into my schedule. I have two young girls; they both still nap in the afternoon. Yeah. You know, yeah. so you know, after lunch on a Saturday and a Sunday, they go down for naps, and and that's that's time that I have to myself. Uh, if, if you don't have that, then I strongly recommend setting aside the first hour of every day for writing. Yeah. Now, this isn't necessarily publishing. I'm not telling people they have to publish an entire blog post every single day. That may or may not work for your business model. But if you have a dedicated hour just for writing and you allow yourself that time to be creative, you'll be far more productive. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, guys, so now we, uh, we will talk about catchy titles and how to create uh, catchy titles. How to read your blog if they do not want to click on it? Um, I'm not saying that you need to write clickbait titles, but the title and blog featured image are the two factors that go into a social user's decision to click or not to click. Since you know you're going to be promoting your blog content on social media, it's in your best interest to go ahead and create the catchy title at the start. So Basumo says there are five common elements of viral headlines. It's emotion, it's content, topic, formal, uh, format element, and promise element. Yeah, just you can screenshot this slide or wait till tomorrow and you will get this presentation. Or just go to Basumo and you will find a really huge and really very, very nice article on uh, titles and headlines. Just see the example. Uh, you see, it's a formula that should work like this. For example, the headline. Seven amazing travel guides that will turn you into a pro. Format. Seven, and we understand that this is a list. Emotion, yeah, and we have amazing. Travel guides stand for uh, content type, yeah. 
turn you. Promise your audience that you will you will make something with them. So what is the value of your article, of your piece of content? And the topic, professional. So you'll become a professional after at this piece of content. Mike, again, we need your piece of advice. Uh, do you have some secrets about headlines for the social media hat? So maybe you can share with Mike <laughs> So how, how, how did it happen? Yes, sorry, no, no secrets. <laughs> um, I don't really use formulas for this either, um, but it's a, just, just as I did with the topics, I, I've had to learn over time what it is that my unique, specific audience tends to prefer, and that happens to be how-to content, very, very tactical in nature, how to link to a blog post, how to perfect uh, your LinkedIn profile, uh, and so on. Whenever I've used um, or at least trying to use a more formulaic title. It hasn't done too well. Uh, that may have been the blog post itself, who knows. Um, but what I wanted to share is for those of us who aren't sure what kinds of titles to create for our audience, I want to share with you a way that you can test those titles without having to invest in expensive back-end software um, that actually allows you to display, you know, a, a, an A-B split test of your titles, and that's by using tweets. So it goes like this. You create a piece of content, and, and you choose the best title that you can imagine for that particular title. You can use, um, you know, the BuzzSumo type formula, um, you know, that, that, that we just looked at, or something else, whatever you can come up with. Choose your best title, and when you have that particular post published, tweet it out using the title. Wait a few hours and then share that post to Twitter again, but this time use an alternate title. Different format, different words, different order, whatever the case might be. Um, now in this case, I, I probably, this is probably not a good example because I've used hashtags. We don't want to really use hashtags uh, for a split test. Just use the text of the title. And what you're going to be able to do, and this is why I included this screenshot, Twitter will show you the analytics for how any particular tweet performs. So this one, you know, you can see it, it got over 1,400 impressions, uh, 130 engagements, and so on. And I can look at that tweet, and I can look at the tweet with the alternate title, and I can compare them. Which one got the most engagement? Which one drove the most clicks? Uh, you know, which one just uh, downright performed the best. Do that, first of all, for that particular post. If you've got a, several different title ideas and you weren't sure which one really was the best, try them all. Just put a few hours in between each tweet and share that article again using the alternate title. Now do that for every variation and put all those notes in a spreadsheet. I know, spreadsheets. It's okay. We won't be scary here. <laughs> Just create a <coughs> excuse me. Simple spreadsheet. Note down the title that you used so that you can compare the format later and how that particular tweet performed, date and time. Run that same test again for your next three or four blog posts. Whether you're blogging once a week, once a month, it doesn't matter. Just the next time you publish a blog post, run this same experiment again and then again, and then again, at least four or five times. And then go back and look. Is there a pattern? Did the how-to type titles perform better? Did the formulaic, listicle type titles perform better? You know, what was it? What was the difference? Hopefully you're able to see that. Hopefully your audience will give you some indication as to, at least of the tweets, which ones perform the best. And then once you get that sense, you can take that tweet title and, and use that as the primary title in your next series of blog posts. Run that for a while. Use your Google Analytics at that point to start to see over time, are those individual blog posts performing better than your past posts? Are they getting more social shares overall? And that leads us into promoting your content on social networks.
Yeah, thank you, indeed. So always test and uh, use analytics to see the success of your past. Thank you, Mike. So now we will talk about promotion. How to promote your blog post on social. Just take a look at the statistics. Uh, it shows information on the ways in which bloggers promote blog posts as of 2017. 95.5% uh, of respondents promote their blog posts via social media. So, and email marketing just takes third place and 55%. So, social media wins the market. Uh, and now, just several tips for you how to promote your blog post on social. Uh, tip number one, include your blog link in your social media profiles. Yes, yeah, so this is my uh, Promo Republic's Twitter page. Uh, well, you can link out on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Uh, you cannot on Instagram. So it's vitally important that you include your link in your Instagram bio, right? Instagram bio for your links. Uh, but there is also a compelling case for including your blog link in all your social profiles. While people are learning about your business, they can also see that you run a blog and they may be compelled to check it out. Yes, yeah, so don't forget to include your links to your social media profiles. Then. <clears throat> Share blog posts on every network you use. Spread the news that you have a new blog post up. If you are using Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram, tell all your audiences about your new blog post. But tailor your social post to the network and audience you are addressing. Keep in mind that social media marketing guide instructions for each network so you can make sure your social post is compelling and encourages people to click the link. Yes, so you cannot post one with the same message on Facebook and uh, Twitter, for example. Yes, because of the Twitter word count and uh, Instagram. So make sure you know all the sizes and your text is correct and its size. Uh, then, share your new and successful post more than once. Uh, even if you are an expert social marketer, you know that not every single member of your social audience sees every post you make. There is no way to ensure 100% visibility. So if you want to build a readership, you have to share your blog post more than once. Don't share too much. Timing is never okay, but share a few times a week, preferably at different times to get the most saturation. So, for example, Thursday for your blog post is okay. Repromote your content. Try writing a different post and using different hashtags or scheduling the same post a few weeks in the future. Yes, yeah? so what I recommend you, I recommend you just to repost, just to repost uh, your uh, previous and last post. Boost your blog post. It is worth it to spend a little money on promoting social. Yes, with Facebook, uh, it's really very easy. Just tap boost post, set your budget, um, the day uh, the promotion will go last till, and that's all. Okay, Mike, please tell us how do you promote your blog on social? Yeah, that is a great question. It's something I've been writing about for years. I actually have a, an entire book on that topic. And first and foremost, it, it bears repeating. It's important for every author to take this time to promote a blog post. It's too easy to think, well, I wrote it, I published it, people will find it. That might seem obvious, but I've seen countless blogs and businesses that their their blog content goes completely unpromoted and unshared to social media. And if you're not going to share it, who will? 
it's imperative yeah. that you get the ball rolling with your content and you start sharing right away. It raises awareness of the content, which brings in more readers and they might potentially share it as well as starting to build up and accrue what we call social proof. Those are the social buttons on the content itself. Hopefully you're using this kind of a button that shows the reader how many times a particular piece of content has been shared to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Google Plus, or Pinterest. You can modify those. I don't, I don't mean modify the accounts, but you can make sure that for your unique business and niche, um, I do recommend only using the social sharing buttons that matter the most. So if you get tons of Twitter and Facebook usage and very little Google Plus or LinkedIn usage, don't share those buttons. Don't even have them on your blog uh, posts. Just have the, the, the top couple that make the most sense for you and show the social proof. So um, if you're doing that, as I do, uh, the first thing that I do once I hit publish on a blog post uh, is tweet it out. Um, just like we were talking about a moment ago, it's usually just the title or a version of the title. Um, if I'm not testing it, I'll absolutely include hashtags. I may even ask people to please retweet that particular post because it's new. And I'll then queue up for later on additional tweets. You know, Allah, you were spied on, spot on how important it is to share that new content more than once. And the pace at which you share new content, you know, how many times the frequency per network, it will vary. You could probably tweet a new piece of content three or four times the first day. And then a couple times the next day, and once a day the rest of the week, and then after that, you know, taper down into uh, a more long-term strategy. That's with a grain of salt because it depends on how often you've been tweeting up until now and your audience and so on. But that's probably what I would work towards for most businesses in terms of frequency. Next, I'll pin it to Pinterest again. You know. Not everybody's going to do the same strategy that I have, which is to be on absolutely every single social network there is. If your audience isn't on Pinterest, don't worry about it. But if they are, it's probably a good bet that they are. You should be pinning at least one image associated with the blog post uh, to Pinterest, and we'll get to images next. After that, I'll compose a post for Facebook, Google Plus, and LinkedIn. And here's what I mean by compose. It's not enough to just share to Facebook and not write anything. It's not enough to just share the title of the blog post. <clears throat> you have to introduce your content. You have to explain to your audience what it is that you're sharing. Why is it relevant to them? Why should they care? One of the best things that you can do is actually ask questions in that share and start a bit of a, of a conversation going. You can see here in this uh, screen, this is actually a Google Plus share, where I'm demonstrating that not only am I including what I call some interesting commentary at the top, I'm actually using some of the formatting that one can use with Google. I'm making my title uh, bold at the top because that looks good on Google Plus. You can see that then in the notifications if somebody's following me on Google Plus. I can use italics by using an underscore around words. I can plus mention. I can use hashtags and so on. So I build that share. And wherever I happen to share it first, whether it's Facebook, Google Plus, or LinkedIn, that interesting commentary, as I call it, is going to be fairly consistent from network to network. So I'll spend a little time on it. I'll spend some time thinking about why my audience cares about this post, what do I want to do, form that initial social post, share it, in this case, let's say to Google Plus, and then I copy it. I copy that text and I use that or a version of it for the other networks that support having that kind of text. It's so important that you do that because it gets your audience involved in your content involved in your share that's going to drive up the engagement drive up the visibility of that piece of content and of course then that's going to drive clicks into the content as you can see here i i, I called out how a full bleed image 
<clears throat> that's just a technical way of saying the image that's attached to my share is part of the blog post and it's big enough that it's going to take the entire width of the screen when it's shared to all the social networks. That's critically important that you have that great image to go along with all of your social shares. Right, Ala? Here I am. Yeah, exactly, Mike. I do agree with you. Uh, so, for now, uh, we will talk about images for visuals. Some statistics. Again, so 94% uh, more views got those articles with images. Yeah, and 71% of marketers report that using the content marketing strategy. So now, uh, for now, I'll show you how to create uh, how to create stunning image from scratch uh, with the promo public. And uh, in several minutes, at the end of the webinar, we will have a promo public demo, so you'll be able to see uh, how it works in real life. Uh, how to do this, how to create a stunning image with the Promer Public. So you need to work with graphics editor. And first, you just choose the background that is relevant to your topic. Uh, you can use a search bar for your keyword. So Promer Public is integrated with Photostock and all the images, uh, these are loads and loads of images. They are free for you to use with Promer Public. So use a keyword and find the best one you like. Uh, then what you need to do, you need to write your headline with different phones to catch attention. So why different phones? Because it's catching. Uh, with Promer Public, you can do that. Then you can tap download to use the cover for your email blast and Facebook ads. Uh, you can, of course, uh, with Promer Public, you can schedule your pop with the ready-made uh, visual to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest coming this month. And uh, if you want to use this stunning visual for, or maybe it's not stunning, I don't know, but I created this, so that's why it's nice for me. Uh, so you can use uh, the image further for your email blast, Facebook ads, but mind the text, please, just use less than 20% text in the image. Um, so, and for your blog post, um, as a header, yes, as a cover uh, visual for your blog post. Then click use and write your caption. Uh, attach your link and then delete it to keep the caption short and clear. And the link will be attached to the visual. So it looks like this. So Mike, and of course, several words from you, just share with us uh, your best practice. How do you create visuals for your this social media head? Beyond the tool that you use, uh, one of the keys that I learned from Rebecca Redis and Pickett's Patrick is to be consistent in the style and the branding for your images. All of my images have not only a logo, but they have the same font, combination. They always incorporate the same color schemes. I'm using borders or lines or the different kinds of graphical elements, but they always have my blues or my tans or my greens so that when somebody who's using a social network or they're off my property in some way and they click through, there's immediately a visual connection between the image and my brand. And that's what makes like a lot of people say they, they make those images uniquely you or in this case uniquely me right so they come to my site and they see they don't even think about it that it's the same font for instance um, but it makes it less jarring and i, I give you a, a bonus tip right now taking the time to decide up front what that style is going to be have specific colors actual hexadecimal colors decided some specific font combinations decided some other kinds of visual elements decided that's going to save you so much time in the future when i go about creating an image 
for a blog post and for social media, I probably spend no more than 15 minutes, 20 minutes tops. I don't have to spend a lot of time searching for images. I already have a sense for what I'm going to need in terms of the actual, like if I'm going to have a photograph, I, I know what I'm looking for and I know what the style is. Even though if you look at my site, you'll see you know, not every image looks like this one that we're looking at. In fact, this one's fairly unique. Um, I, I wanted to try some different techniques with that, but it still didn't take me very much time uh, because I know what my fonts are, I know what my colors are. I didn't have to wonder, oh gosh, what am I going to make today? So that's um, how I create, and, and, and like you, I'm not, I would never call my images stunning. <laughs> uh, so uh, hopefully they're good enough. Um, and and that's, that's really kind of a model for me when it comes particularly to images, is that good enough or 80% done is better than perfect but still in your head, right? It, it's much better to have that image and be able to move on and share it and, and get your blog content out there. And so with that, uh, you know, we're into what I call the lightning round, right? Where we go into tips and best practices. So my first tip is to make sure that you have a set focus for all of your content. This is actually one of the most critical things. In fact, this is a topic that I suggest people think about before they even start blogging. Make sure that you know that what you're going to be writing about is going to not only resonate with your audience, but there is an existing audience for it. Uh, my other company that I'm the CMO for, SiteSell, one of our first tools that we have our members use is called Brainstorm It. And it's all about keyword research, making sure that what you think you should be writing about, other people actually care about that particular topic. And then you stay focused on that particular topic. It's easy to think that the wider net that you cast, the broader uh, set of topics that you write about, the more traffic and audience and engagement that you're going to get, but the reverse is actually true. Narrow that niche down as much as you possibly can. Tip number two, blog about what you know. So often I talk with new bloggers and they'll tell me that uh, they're struggling because they want to spend, I don't want to spend, but they end up spending 10, 12 or more hours working on a single blog post. And that's because they're doing lots of research. They're, they're trying to answer questions that they don't already know the answer to. Uh, they're trying to dig up statistics uh, and they're reading all kinds of other content. And <clears throat> that is okay for an individual post if you need to write that content, but that shouldn't be the norm. That shouldn't be the kind of content that you're creating all of the time because it takes too long. Instead, if you focus on the topics that you already know about, the problems that you already address uh, with your existing clientele, whether it's through products or services or something else, if you can write to that, your writing will go faster. For me, and I know I, I hesitate to share this because I've been doing this for longer than some of you, but for me, the average time that it takes me to create a blog post is 45 minutes. And that'll probably be a 1,250 to 1,500 word blog post. And before you ask, I'm a horrible typist. <clears throat> I do not stare at my screen and type. I look down at the letters. So it's not because I'm a really, really fast typer. It's that for most of my content, for my average blog post, I'm just sharing what's already in my head and putting it into Evernote and then organizing it uh, in a thoughtful manner that answers somebody's questions. I mentioned earlier, this is, this is point number three, set aside time every single day for writing. Like I said before, that you don't have to publish every day, although the more often you publish, the faster you'll get to that tier of 50 total or 50 or more pieces of content in your archive. Remember HubSpot said that's where you'll start to see an exponential increase in traffic leads and sales. But what's more important for most of us 
is that we set aside some time, whether it's every day, every week, you know, whatever you can work into your schedule, have that dedicated time because blogging is not something that's in our DNA. It's a skill that you have to learn. It's a muscle that you have to exercise. That means doing it repetitively. So before, don't worry about how long or how short your blog posts are. Make it as long as it needs to be. Other than if you're a celebrity like Seth Godin or a, a true you know, Hollywood celebrity, <clears throat> most of us probably need to write more than 250 words in a blog post. And I'll also tell you that generally speaking, longer content tends to perform better over time than shorter content. But what's most important is that you've chosen a focused, targeted topic to write about, one that's going to resonate with your audience, one that uh, will answer their questions, and you do so in a thorough way. That will be a successful piece of content. And as you add more of those to your archive, your entire site will perform better. <clears throat> Bloggers often, as you can need to, I actually just covered that a moment ago, but like just to reiterate, you want to get to that 50 plus pieces of content level as quickly as you need to. In other words, ask yourself or ask your business the question, how long do we want to wait? How much time do we have to ramp up this content marketing machinery? And if you're okay with 12 months, then publish once a week. If you're okay with or you need to be at a shorter time frame, and you're going to need to publish more often. Tip number six, focus on bottom of funnel content. Uh, I could do an entire webinar just about top of funnel, middle of funnel, bottom of funnel. Uh, but briefly, to make sure we're all clear on this, top of funnel in this example means people who are not even aware that they have a problem. They don't know that... Um, or they haven't thought about how they're spending a lot of time taking their family outside of the house to different recreational spaces uh, because there's nothing really to do at home. Middle of funnel means that they recognize that they have an issue, but they haven't yet determined what the solution might be. So again, as a parent of two girls, I might recognize that every time we want to go do something, we have, we have to leave the house and we have to drive for 25 minutes to go do something that is potentially crowded if it's nice out, potentially costs money. Um, it's an environment I don't necessarily have control over. Uh, you know, all these other problems and potential issues that have to be weighed in and compared against the you know, fun that we want to have. Bottom of funnel means they've recognized the problem and they've recognized potential solutions. And now they're looking for an actual vendor to provide that solution, whether it's a product or a, uh, you know, a service or the answer to their question, whatever the case might be. So I gave you these examples a moment ago because I used to sell swimming pools. And the people that came into my shop to buy a swimming pool, they'd already identified swimming pools as the solution to their problem. They wanted to have an outdoor living space where their family could have fun day or night, weekday, weekend, without having to go anywhere. Not to say they'd never go anywhere, but they've got that option now in their backyard to really enjoy themselves. So I don't need to focus, once they're in my store, I don't need to focus on those kinds of questions. I can concentrate on painting a picture for them and comparing and providing the kinds of basic information they need to make the final decision. That's focusing on bottom of funnel content. And you'll have to figure out exactly what that means for your unique business and content. Finally, I'll already touched on this, and it's a great, great point, using Facebook advertising. Facebook advertising is the single most cost-effective advertising available today online or offline. 
you look at billboard ads, TV ads, uh, pay-per-click ads, it, newsletter advertising, compare them all. Facebook advertising is the best because you're going to pay for results and you're going to get top of mind exposure for free. And here's how that works. When you have a new piece of blog content or any kind of content, you know, I'll already point it out, for instance, that you can share your Facebook page and boost it. When you do that, what you want to do is boost it usually to people who are unfamiliar with you. They're unfamiliar with your content. So I put in here that they're interest-based audiences, people who could potentially be interested based on things that they've told Facebook in the past. So for me, I'm picking people who have expressed interest in social media. They've expressed interest in marketing. Uh, I could also choose demographic information like um, whether or not they are a CMO, right? Or they work for some other business size. There's different ways to look at it depending on the content and the options Facebook gives you. But the point here is I'm not necessarily boosting it to fans of the page. I'm not boosting it to website visitors. I'm using my blog content to expand my reach and expand the traffic coming into my site, into that specific blog content beyond the people who've already heard of me. Because those are people who are feeling safe in clicking that ad. We're not asking them to buy anything. We're asking them to read something, hopefully something of interest to them. If you have a Facebook pixel installed, and you should, Facebook will be watching who comes to your site and will help you to grow a new audience called website visitors. So as you promote blog content to new people, those people become added to your website visitors audience. So then later, when you have a lead generation piece of content where they have to put in their email address to download it, or you're running a sale uh, or something else that's going to directly impact your business bottom line, now you can focus on creating ads that get in front of that audience. These are people who've already heard of you. They've, they've been to your site at least once, if not multiple times. They're familiar with your content. You've already developed the know, like, and trust that you need to convert them into a lead or a sale. So those, those audience ads will be even more effective. And that's my last tip. Do you have anything to add to that, Ala? Yeah, thank you, Mike. So they're really valuable tips. Thank you very much for them. You guys, just make sure that you save this page, just a shot, or wait uh, till tomorrow. You will get this presentation with all the talent tips by Mike Alton. Thank you very much. So, uh, thank you. Uh, the presentation is over. So, it's all uh, for now. Login. If you have some questions, Please feel free and ask us uh, here in the chat box, and uh, we will ask them all. Uh, so we are waiting for questions. If not, uh, if everything is clear for you, uh, just let me know that uh, there are people who are interested in Promo Republic, because you know, this is a tradition. Uh, every Wednesday uh, we have a demo and you ask questions concerning the tool and I help you uh, and I help you with them. So with the tool, how to, how to manage it, how to create posts, content calendar, post ideas. So just uh, let me know that uh, there are people uh, who need from a public demo. I just want to remind you about personal training with the social media experts. This is the link. You can apply and get your 30 minutes of private hype consultation analysis, one week full of support and four courses. Okay, uh, Mike, thank you again. So this was very nice and this was an honor for me to have you here at my webinar. Thanks for your Valid tips. Thanks for your time. Guys, thank you as well. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So webinar recording as well as the presentation are on the way. Um, 
Have a nice day and make sure you sign up for our next webinar for next Wednesday, same time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I'll see you soon and goodbye.